I'll go and snag flow and we'll be able to do a demo of a scapular extraction. And then I'll show you a couple of common stretches. One thing that's super important that sometimes gets missed is Has anyone had a massage themselves? What do you guys feel? Relaxed. <laughs> Same thing for animals. We can help prevent injury. We're helping increase red and white blood cells to the area. So that's gonna help with any healing, any micro tearing, that kind of stuff. We're gonna decrease our lactic acid buildup, realign any muscle fibers, just increase overall muscle health and well-being. There is a long list of benefits that do occur and for every different condition as well. Once we bring Flo in, we'll be able to see some of the benefits that she's getting through her demo diagnosed conditions. So again, we're always working with the veterinarian. Headaches, temporal mandibular joint disorders, flexural limb deformities, arthritis, sprains, strains, paralysis, paresis, bursitis, hygromas, lumbar myositis, Honestly, the list goes on and on. And even though there are over 64 conditions that we can help with, there's also a little flip side to it as well. Massage therapy necessarily isn't the best case for every horse, every condition, that kind of thing. So again, we're working with the veterinarian just to see what the best option is for that particular patient. The scapula on the equines. So they don't have a collarbone like we do. So their shoulder is strictly attached by soft tissue. So as a therapist, we can help manipulate and do some stretching. I'll go and snag flow and we'll be able to do a little bit of a, a demo of a scapular extraction. And please, please, please do not practice this at home. It can do damage. So please contact it, our EMT near you. So let me just go grab flow. I'll be right back. As a therapist, we just kind of follow along um, and help them just make them feel their best. So she's so we're just doing some aperage, which is just going to help increase some of that circulation, warm the tissues up before I go and manipulate a little bit more, use some deeper pressures. And we can already tell and see that she does use her shoulders pretty good because she is a little overdeveloped here. Um, but also partially confirmation is involved with that depending on what kind of work she does. And before um, a therapist will usually get all of the case history questions, that kind of stuff, finding out if there's any medications that they're on, supplements, good girl. Okay, we're warmed up a little bit in through the shoulder here. As a therapist, I should be able to fit all of my fingers in through the scapula, in behind the scapula. And it should kind of melt like butter. Like I said, she is a little bit more developed, so we might not necessarily see it. Oh, there you go, good girl. So I'm able to pretty much put all of my entire hand in behind her scapula, and that's purely because it's all attached by muscle. And we'll see, I'll do, so I'll continue, but I just want to point out that the lick and a chew, we're going to get a yawn soon. So those are all reactions that the therapist is looking for, and every reaction is a good reaction. So at first we were timid, and then we got that relaxation, the head lowered, everything like that within what, two, three minutes? So going through an entire treatment, you really get to see the changes, and then you see the changes from the left side to the right side as well. So they're always going to have a better side. During our four T's, usually we go through and see like, okay, what's the better side? What's the side that they're struggling with more? Start with the good side so that we know what to expect and what this horse is normally like. And then we go on to the, their bad side and we're able to kind of really pinpoint certain areas and compare from left to right as well. So I'll go through and just do a little bit more just to see if she'll give us any more reactions here. rubbing the skin, rubbing the muscles, but there is method to the madness. There's different pressures, there's different manipulation, so now I'm doing a fingertip knead, so I'm strictly using my fingertips, which is a more pinpointed area, versus our effleurage, which is just a 
general warming everything up. Head's lowering again. Stretching out. Other signs for feet. Um, feet blur, you're an output. These are good signs. Good. Swing with, with the therapist as well. You'll kind of see them just kind of go with you a little bit. And the technique I just did there where I'm kind of cupping and pumping is our lymphatic pump. So because we're moving all of those fluids in and around, we're needing to drain it somewhere. And these horses have their lymphatics, um, same with us, um, but we just go through and we just open it up and kind of say like, okay, please drain. Good mama. Trigger point therapy. This is commonly and mistakenly known as a knot, but it's the hyper irritable focus of the structures. And trigger point therapy is able to help with that. So we'll see if she's got any trigger points through her back, because as we see, she does have a really long back. So, and it is pretty common. So if you have end up having a therapist come out and they say, oh, there was a trigger point here, we got a partial release or a full release, don't panic. That's normal. It's what the therapist is there for. So I'm just gonna warm everything up before I go into deep pinpointing work. Okay, let's see if I'll be able to get it because I am a little short for her right now. Ideally, I would have my stool. But I'm gonna go through and do some stripping. So I'm adding pressure and going along her longissimus. We're getting a little reaction there, a little tail switch. We got the kick up, so that knee is okay. That's too much pressure. We got an ouchy point there. So we'll warm it up a little bit again. And we'll come through and try another strip. Good girl. So again, every reaction's a good reaction. It's just their way of telling me. Okay. So I hit this point here, and it might be hard to tell from there, but there are muscles that are rippling here. So to me, that tells me there's a trigger point, so I'll go back through and hold my um, trigger point therapy until we get a partial release. Still reactive, but she's not, like the muscles aren't twitching and trembling anymore, so I'm gonna slowly release that again. We're gonna go through, we'll do a drain out. And because I'm doing that compression against it, I'm pushing all of her structures down. So I want to come through and stretch her out. Good girl. So I'm just running my hands along the midline, getting them to engage their core and stretch that top line out. Again, you want to ensure that your structures are warm before you do any stretching. And you're going to hold for 15, ideally hold for 15 to 30 seconds. One thing that's super, super, duper important that sometimes gets missed is the horses need to be as square as possible when you're actually going through and doing with your stretch. Because that means that their, their structures are going to be in as proper alignment for them as as they can be. Uh, obviously, confirmation, everything plays a part too. So again, more muscles, holding for 15 to 30 seconds. If they can't get up to that 15 to 30 seconds, we're not gonna be pushing them. We don't wanna stretch to hurt. Your own body alignment is important as well. So let me just quickly warm her up this way. And then I'll show you a couple of common stretches. I forgot my carrot, so we can't do our carrot stretches. has lowering already and I'm going very fast for this too so this is awesome reactions for how quick I'm going. Okay, so our shoulders have warmed up a little bit and she has been walking around and that kind of stuff too so even just like a five minute walk around is sufficient. It doesn't need to be a huge walk trot canter although you can do it after your cool down after you've ridden or you can do it after a little warm up just Again, walking around the arena for that first little bit. So I'm just going to square her up. There we go. That'll be good. Okay, so common mistakes are you also want to help support those joints and keep them in their proper alignment as well. So for this one, we'll start in a hoof pike position. We're going to cup our fetlock and we're going to cup the carpus. And I'm going to lunge towards the hind. I'm going to place my own elbows onto my thighs so that I'm not hurting my own back. And then we're just going to slightly push pressure from the carpus back to the outside hind. Easy bit. So we don't want her to take that step. And I'm not adding too much resistance. So like this is probably as far as she can go right now without taking 
many of those muscles. Good girl. Another one you can do is cupping the carpus, placing the cannon on our thigh, and we're going to walk it out. Again, you want to keep it nice and in line with her body. If you want to engage that elbow, we're going to lift, and we're going to bring it up. And we're going to hold for those 15 to 30 seconds. Then we've already seen our tummy tuck. Um, so that's when we're coming and um, placing our hands along the midline, getting them to engage and bring that up. They can also do it as a gluteal scratch. So relaxed. <laughs> Too relaxed. So you're going to come and place this kind of on either side of their tail. We're going to do an ever so slight scratch. And there you can see her engaging herself. And she squared herself up as well. Good girl. That was lovely. And our tail stretches. Another thing that I see a lot is people placing themselves facing the horse. When you're doing the proper stretch, that horse is going to really pull against you. And you don't want to go face planting into their tush. Where I feel like I want her a little bit more square, but that's okay. She'll help realign herself a little bit. So I'm going to take um, my hands. I'm going to cut kind of part of her tail. I'm going to keep my body sideways so I'm not facing her. And I'm just going to ever so slightly. I'm barely doing anything. She's doing it all. And she's going to pull against me here. So I'm having to anchor myself down. Because she is pulling against me completely. And if I were to just let go, you can kind of see how she was resisting there. Another one that we can do is along the side as well. Keeping it, again, in alignment. And I'm going to keep my body to the side. Okay, so you'll, I want you guys kind of looking all in through the cycle and the hip joint. So I'm very lightly pulling and she's going to pull against me. So you can kind of see that tensor fascia lata engaging. Good girl. Good girl. And what I do to one side, I want to do to the other. Hi, Mama. I'm just going to go through and do it on this side as well. I'm really having to squat myself down so that she's not pulling me against her. So those are just some stretches. Good girl, we got a lick and a chew, so another good little sign there.